Welcome back. Today we got a special episode for you, at least for me. I've been looking forward to this for a very long time, about a year or so. But uh, some shop update. We tried heat proofing this. We tried doing the wrap like that, but it didn't really quite work on this side. Uh, as you can see, there was some issues. Thank God we were watching, but um, you know the shielding is on on this side. We're almost complete. This side is good. And then we rerouted the fuel and this is gonna be tuned next week. So that's good to go. Um, bro, who else we got? Uh, okay, Tony. Tony and his Instagram name, Thunderballs. So he came to us uh, wanting to get a 2 and 2500 uh, Haltech built 2.4 motor. Everything is cool. Uh, we started digging into it, put a base map on, and I was like, everything is not cool, bro. For starters, he has a leaky radiator that's on the bottom over there. It's just like the plastic part is leaking. Um, his downpipe we changed it but he had a downpipe with the wrong gasket and it was also leaking um plus the downpipe where it connected to the secondary pipe of the downpipe that was bad so we just got a downpipe a, a brand new one and it's gonna take care of it this, this is a map one that runs all the way to the back so it's good um timing you can see uh let's see if we can see Okay, the crank. Okay. Can I zoom out? <laughs> okay, so the crank, crank is a TDC right here. And then... Okay, the crank is a TDC. But... His intake, as you can see is not exactly it's a little bit more uh retarded as you can see this is the mark and this is the the valve cover mark this one's even worse they i don't know what they did but they tried where um this middle section the 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 zero mark is actually the tdc which follows this um this dial right here that's actually the tdc that should, it doesn't matter what's on the outside that should match up with this and that does not and it looks like you know someone put a mark where the tdc is on here to match that but they didn't actually correct this so his timing is all off like to a point where when we're doing a boost leak test it's just you know leaking out because the valves are open um so we're gonna have to fix that and get them squared away but today we are tuning, and I'm very excited for it, this beautiful Evo 9 RS uh, Victor's car, Victor Reyes. He is a member of our armed forces. Thank you, Victor. He, this car has a history, like he's, I think the second owner or whatever, he's gotta had it for a very long time. Uh, since he like met his wife or something and he won this in a like a some kind of competition with his local uh, tire shop <clears throat> So this is an Evo 9 NS uh, RS and he did all the work as far as uh, interior goes. He got that beautiful um, Gauge cluster he programmed everything himself um, It's just really neat really clean and he did all the wiring. He has a double pumper set up uh, with a surge tank. I'll just show you that. Really clean job. We just did the plumbing. Um, he has a circuit board right there. We just did the plumbing for him and connected the secondary pump to the fuel and that's about it. So this was actually a build uh, that we talked about uh, a while back and he basically you know, came to me a couple of years back. We tuned him, he's on my other videos, e-tuning. Um, he had a 62, well he still does, 62, 66. 
uh, unbuilt motor, he made like 500. So today, well, this year, he sent us the entire car. We basically built this from top to bottom. Um, you know, S3 cams, springs, retainers, the whole works. Um, he also, we did the bottom end stock crank with turbo tough rods, I-beams, you know, the typical build. Um, you know, this car is actually built for over a thousand. He's got the good rod bolts and the clearance for it. My only quibs about this is the injectors. He has ID uh, 1700s. So we're going to be capped, you know, like if you do the math, uh, it'll be around 700 something. Um, he does have dual pumpers, but it's still, that's not, that's not enough. I would wait. I wish he went with 2100s to really max his turbo out, but it's a clean car. I love it. Like original paint. Um, and you know, it's, it just works. He's got Helltech 25, uh, 100 elite and it drives awesome. Like just starts up all, you know, every time. Uh, we drive it around. We broke it in for him because, you know, he couldn't come up here. He's uh, from Alabama. And, uh, yeah, let's today we're going to do flex fuel tune uh, on Haltech. Oh, uh, we also did the IGN1A coils for him. Uh, this is Ohm Racing plate, but we made the harness. And this is running sequential. And, you know, like it's an overkill for what he has, but it's still nice. Um, you know, anything over, I would say eight, 900, I would say start looking into something like that, especially if you have an aftermarket ECU, but yeah, this is a really clean car. I love it. So this ultimately hit 25 pounds, but it wasn't in a smooth way. Um, so the Haltech currently is set up to have a very sensitive response to overboosting or any of that stuff. Uh, what it did was I hit, I think like two PSI more than what I'm supposed to. And it cut and then it allowed it again. So this is part of tuning. I really didn't hit it on the street because there's literally a jail and a police station right next to my shop. Um, so we're going to have to tune the boost on the dyno um, and, you know, we will basically correct everything. So this was ultimately 25 PSI, um, absolutely no timing. The fuel, it looks like correction was pretty high. I was trying to make it rich. Uh, so we're going to correct all that. This is on 26, 27 pounds, moderate timing and, you know, hella rich. Now I remember while I'm tuning this, uh, the wastegate, he had issues before where we found out the spring rate that Tile has advertised is not accurate. Like it's off by a lot. So we literally had to uh, test everything ourselves, seat pressure and, um, you know, a static by doing a test, um, several tests, and which is basically on the channel. If you go back last year when I did tune him, um, he posted some videos in my channel where he did all the tests to make people aware of the spring pressure advertised versus what you actually get. Um, so now that everything makes sense, I recall that, and then you know we got the 
the spring pressure versus the waste gate versus the efficiency of his manifold all squared out. I'm no longer worried about the boost and the curve and all that stuff. Now I'm doing additional fueling um, because it's hella rich. pounds of boost and running nines and tenths um, in the area where between 27 and 30 pounds of boost so we know what it's going to take but I'm sure that we can achieve this number with less boost maybe a little bit of timing but a lot leaner because he was running tens and nines That was on 27, 28 pounds and a um, little bit leaner. It's still around 11s and low high 10s, um, which is considerably rich. But, you know, me and uh, Victor talked about it where he's at. He doesn't have that, that the fuel quality isn't that great. So I'd rather keep it a little rich. Um, but lowering the boost and uh, leaning it out a little bit actually made more power on lower boost. And he's not running crazy timing either. He's running like 12s uh, by red line. Um, but you know this is what it is on 93 and we're gonna switch to 85 now This is on the same boost as before, but on 85. As a little, uh, you know, um, caveat with the 85 here, we used X98, but he has a surge tank, so it takes a while for the reading to get accurate because the main tank got to fill the surge tank, and the surge tank has, you know, 93 in it and whatnot. Um, so it, t it took us a while for it to get up to like 80%. Um, and it's still climbing, but luckily, you know, ECU um, is good that it's constantly making adjustments for the fueling, and the fueling is rich, like low 11s, but, you know, we're headed in the right direction. This is on 31, 32 pounds of boost, and uh, same timing as before, made it just a little bit leaner, it's still running low 11s on uh, 80 plus percent ethanol.
Lewis is on 33 pounds of boost and he's running the same timing I'm working on the fueling right now but I notice his uh, fuel injector duty cycle is a little bit high for what it should be at this point um, just gonna do a quick calculation but I know we can hit 700 plus on on the injectors I don't want to go over like 95 96 percent duty cycle he's already in the in the 80s um, high seven high 70s so let's see what we get out of uh, running a little bit more boost This is on 37 pounds of boost, peaks at 38, but then he goes to 37 for the entire ride. And uh, that's basically 2 PSI more than what I was running before. And um, he picked up a lot of power, so we're in the efficiency range, but his injectors are right at like 95%. Um, and this is a street driven car. Me and Vic spoke about it, and you know he's not gonna want more than that, and it has to be reliable, it has to be on every time. So I am gonna do one more pull just to clean out um, a couple of the timing issues a little bit, and we're probably gonna end it here. the same boost um, same everything just cleaned up the fuel a little bit and uh, a little bit of timing adjustments and uh, that's basically it this is a comparison between e85 and 93 substantial um, I wish he had larger injectors this turbo is a used um, you know got at least four years into it I think maybe an upgrade um, but this is perfect for the street you know like anything above 800 is very very difficult to use but I'm, you know, I'm glad that we went through this. Um, he's going to love, love this car because it's really frightening. The torque is really high on this uh, car. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you do. Um, this was an awesome project. Uh, the car was straight. There's no hiccups whatsoever. Vic did an awesome, awesome job in wiring and setting everything up. Um, great communication. Me and him go back and forth, you know, on on everything just to make sure um, you know we do what he wants and we don't we do that with most of our clients um, and you know the shop is full all the time is because we enjoy uh, solving problems we get a lot of clients just you know you know other than the bill they have like severe issues that other people could not solve and there hasn't been one that we haven't been able to so far um, but either way, you know, going away on a tune and build, there might be issues down the line, but we're open to helping anybody who's needing that help. Um, but that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and until next time, be kind.